Welcome to the Arts and Medicine Studio. I'm so, so excited to visit with you a studio of a good friend and colleague from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And let's see what happens. Hello, John, how are you? Hi, Nitsa. Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, dropping in on me in the studio. You know, John, I always admired your work. I remember visiting your studio a long time ago and seeing how you are so into creating bodies of work that when other people look at it, they know it's you. They don't have to wonder, oh, this looks like this or that look like that. And I could see how you're working to get it just the way you want. And I was thinking about control and about how, when we're having fun, can we have more control to get the fun that we want to achieve? So I was wondering if you could take us on a little tour at your studio and maybe share with us some of your tricks, your ideas and your inspiration. Yes, I can show you my tools. I can show you my paintings. Are and here's, this is a drawing of a painting that I made of a friend of mine. Her name is Bianca. So, and there it is, a pie. Anki's gonna show it to you. Wow. I made two paintings of Bianca and that's one of them. And then I make drawings of the paintings. Fantastic. So you first, you first have an idea and then you draw it and then you paint it. Yes. Or no, sometimes, sometimes it is like that. Sometimes I just make a painting and then I make a drawing of the painting. Fantastic. And since Anki and I were both little kids, we've always drawn in books like this and we have all of our books and it's so fun. We have a whole library of all the books we've filled with drawings. That's amazing. This, I told you I have a lot of movies, uh, movies that I've liked since I was a little kid. Well, this guy, his name is Larry Fessenden and he's a movie director. He makes scary movies. I like scary movies. I liked scary movies when I was little and I still do. And this guy, I've been a fan of his movies um, since I was in college. And I got to meet him uh, a couple of years ago and I asked him if he would come to the studio and sit for a painting, so he did. So I made this painting of him and now I'm making paintings of this painting. I also sometimes let me see, let me get a different piece actually. This one. If you had a piece of bamboo, it looks like that. Can you see that? Yes. Nitsa? Yes, I can. So see how on the when you cut it, it's just like a flat cut like that. Can you see that? Yes, we make flutes out of bamboo and I also grow them in my backyard. However, in a hospital, we cannot use natural materials. I would recommend to maybe take the big straws that we sent you in your art kit or use pencils and tape them all together into the brush. But when you're home, if you have access to bamboo, you could do exactly what John does. Yes. Well, I take a piece of bamboo like this, but the, the main point is that I want my brush to be really long. So I don't always use bamboo. I use other stuff too, I can show you an example. But what I really love about bamboo is you could sharpen the tip like this. It's almost like making a spear. Um, but if you sharpen the tip, see it's hollow inside. And then if you put a slit right in the middle, then you make a pen. It's like an ink pen. It's the best kind of ink pen because bamboo holds a lot of ink. I would love it, John, if you could show us a little examples of, of making, uh, making stains or drawing or doing stuff with brushes. Okay. Um, well, let me start with this. So look at this. Can you see that? Yeah. What does that look like to you on the camera? I don't know. It looks like gradation, gradation of the color black and, and going into gray from, to me, but I actually see a little bit of green in it. Yeah, the green is an accident. I dropped some green on there when I was, I was, I used this 
um, the way that I use this, I made this. So I started with regular black ink that was this black. And I poured a little bit of, I got 10 bottles or 12 bottles. And I poured ink in each one of the 12 bottles. And then I poured more water in this bottle, a little less water in this bottle, a little less water in this bottle, a little less in this bottle. So I got 12 different grays all the way up to the black. You know what's interesting, John, is that the dark colors look a lot closer than the light colors. So I get a feeling of perspective how things look far and close. It looks like it's far away like that, right? Yeah, well, that's, that's really great. I mean, that's what you can do with it. You can make things look far away. Um, so can you see, these are my ink bottles that I was telling you about. So then I tape a number to each one of them. So I know this is number seven. Can you see the seven? So that is this one right here, number seven. It's kind of in the middle. And this one is number nine. So number nine is this gray right here. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll make a little drawing for you and show you what I can do with it. I love it. I can't wait to, to try the long brush. I have so much bamboo at home and so many brushes. I'm definitely going to, to try it out. What well, it takes a lot of practice because it's pretty hard to draw with something that's really long, but it's fun. It makes it really fun. It makes it harder and you make mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. You could call them mistakes, but I have a rule in the studio that there's no such thing as mistakes. It's exactly the rules we work with. Yeah, there's no such thing as a mistake. But when you first start, you might feel like you're making mistakes. But the mistakes are beautiful and they become part of the drawing, so they're not really actually mistakes. Right. Right. All right. So what are you here gonna we go. Draw? Huh? What are you going to draw? Amki and I were recently in Vermont. It's such a beautiful place. We were in a log cabin in the forest for a month to get away from New York City and take a break. And while we were there, we found this giant moth. Wow. It's really big. Look how big it is to my hand. Wow. It's almost the size of my hand. It's such a beautiful moth. That's so beautiful. Are you going to try to draw that? Yes. Yeah, so I'm so excited. I put the moth here. And then I have my drawing board there. And I'm going to stand over here. It's almost like playing basketball. Like you have the free throw line, you know? Like I'm not going to cross over this line right here. So the drawing is like way over there. And I have the ink right here. And I'm gonna dip my brush in the ink. I'm gonna touch it on this paper towel just to get a little off so I don't have too much ink on it. Now I'm gonna draw on the paper over here, but I'm gonna be looking at the moth. And I'm using number five ink. So that's kind of a light color ink. And it's good to start with a light color first because if you mess, if you like mess up or make a line that you don't like, when you go with the darker ink, you can fix it. You can make it like more the way you want it to look. Now you can see like, as I'm drawing my, my pen, cause it's so long and I don't have great control. It's going to make marks that I don't necessarily have absolute control over. But I like that. I like not having absolute control of it. Because the kind of accidental marks that I get have a, have a quality that I really like. So then at a certain point, you have to dip again because the pen starts to run low on ink. So I dip again. Now this swing is going to be harder because I have to draw from over here. I like it that you're looking at the moth and not looking at your paper to where you could just go into the 
movement of the line rather than try to go back and forth. I'm going to try that too. Sometimes I'm looking at the ma, but then sometimes I do look at the drawing. I don't only look at the ma, but mostly I'm looking at the ma. Yeah. <laughs> Monthly you're looking at the ma. Monthly, yeah. So I think that's good. I think I can stop there. John, thank you so much for taking us on a magical tour in your studio and inspiring us to do art in out-of-the-box kind of way. I could see how we could use long sticks to draw even on the floor, put our paper on the floor, on a, you know, high up, you know, away from the reach of your hand. It really challenges us to create art like wasn't even made yet in the universe and that's what we love so much and guys if you want to show john your work please send me uh, an image of what you made to amnita at gmail.com and thank you thank you so much both of you and we would love to see you at the studio and see you sometimes in person take care that would be great See you guys sometime. Thank you much. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye.